Good afternoon, YouTube. So today I want to talk a little bit about the tongue. Um, I'm going to put some scriptures in the description box down below. Uh, scriptures that are referencing about the tongue. Okay. Um, you know, I was praying about this earlier today. Uh, you know, I saw a couple videos and I don't want to talk about every single video I saw. Um, but what, what I like to say is that, you know, first and foremost, you got to give it up to God. God knows everything that we do. God sees everything that we do. God has blessed us with the ability to have conversations with people. Whether those conversations need to take place or they don't, God has given us the chance to grow in faith and to learn from one another. One of the most concerning things to me is that I see that there are some channels like Alan Parr the Beat, uh, Smart Christian Channel, um, Search for Truth, or Fight for Truth, I think is the name of the channel. Um, I love you guys. I've watched some of your guys' content, and I like the content. Uh, most of the stuff that I see is very stays within the scripture, stays within the verses, stays within the biblical context. Uh, Seiko Woods, shout out to you. I've seen some of your content as well. Um, there was another person, I'm not so familiar with him, but I saw his content the other day. He was basically wanting to call Marcus Rogers to get out on his channel and have a conversation. Sadly, that conversation didn't take place. Um, so when I think about the tongue and I think about how the tongue is so vital, it's our vital in our walk with God. It's vital how we communicate. It's important how we either can save people and get people to come to church or push people further away from church. Um, you know, our, our tongue can give the best speeches in the world where you can sit back and you can listen to someone who's very eloquent, who can speak, who can get that out there. And you're like, man, I really like what he said. Man, I really like that. And then there's the other side of it where people are so destructive with their words that it impacts you. It's, it, it's toxic, you know, and you're like, man, I don't want to deal with that person. I, for one, being a new Christian, as I've said this plenty of times before on some of the videos I've made, being in this for three and a half years, I still have that struggle. I believe passionately in certain things, and then I speak from a place of passion. I don't speak from a place of wisdom. And I think a lot of us do that from time to time, even as Christians, even as people who have been in this for years and years and years, okay? Sometimes we get so upset that we may say something that we regret later. This is why scripture is so important. This is why the scriptures tells us to be mindful of what we say. And there is so much power in the tongue. For instance, if we look at James 3 in chapter 2, it says, Indeed, we will make many mistakes. All kinds of mistakes we make. It says, For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. So if we had the ability to control it, if we could control what we say, we would be perfect in every other way. A lot of times I see uh, YouTube channels and I always want to grow. I want to get more knowledge. I want to understand. I go to church. I listen to my pastor. I read my Bible. I read the scriptures and I really try to understand it. I get, I write a bunch of scriptures down, a bunch of verses down. I reference them all the time. I pray about it. A lot of times I will do a video, I will pray about it before I actually do a video. Why? Because the tongue has power. The tongue can either lead people in a great way or you can destroy people in a bad way. I've seen where the tongue elevates people and people feel good because of a compliment. At the same time, I've seen the tongue destroy a person and make a person feel bad with a comment. We have a responsibility as Christians to say things to help other people, to be compassionate, to be loving. And there is nothing loving when you get on a channel and you sit here and you actually start saying things that criticize other Christians. Marcus Rogers is a prime example of this. Now, I know people say, man, you're always going at Marcus Rogers because the thing that bothers me the most about this individual isn't the fact that he may not have sound theology, isn't the fact that maybe his doctrine isn't correct. I think a lot of it is just because of his conduct, his character, how he comes across, how he says things, the deception that he will use. 
okay? The fact that he knows and understands what he does can generate him views. Making excuses for controversy. Yes, many great men of the Bible were controversial. What is controversial? Controversial is just opposing another argument, and it causes controversy. There is a way to do this in a polite, in a very loving, caring way, and then there's the way to do it like Marcus Rogers does, where he calls people out, where he calls them, you know, punks or, you know, they're not godly or, or, or accusing people of their stance within how they walk with God, okay? Makes, makes sweatshirts and t-shirts that says, gummy bear Christians is canceled and then has a boot stepping on the gummy bears, almost as to say that if your walk isn't exactly right with God, man, I'm going to step on you. I'm going to do this. This is what this conveys. And you're selling this product as that this is a great thing. This is not a great thing. But people love to be entertained. So what do people do? They get on there and they listen to these spiels that, that, that Marcus may say for entertainment purposes. Other people will go to other channels because they want good, sound teachings. Now, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher. I've only been in this for three and a half years, so I don't understand everything that the Bible talks about. But what I do go is I go by the Word of God because the Word of God is His Word. He's all-knowing. He's all-truth. So there's nothing in this Bible, there's nothing in this Bible that I read that is not truth. There is nothing in this Bible that says anything is wrong. As a matter of fact, this Bible sets us up with guidelines and things that we are to follow. Warns us about certain things, such as our tongues. What our tongues can potentially do is destroy people. Tongues have caused wars. Tongues have caused humiliation and, and bad feelings. Me as being a new Christian, been in this three and a half years, when I'm touched by something and I get angry... Sometimes I hold my tongue, and I'm smart for doing that. But on the other hand, there are times I don't hold my tongue at all. And I have profusely had to apologize to the person I have offended by what I have said. I have gone before God and got on my knees and cried and sobbed to Him, asking Him to forgive me because of the things I've said. And when people understand that, hey, I'll go ahead and say whatever I want, to get views, to get subscribers. I'll call people names and humiliate them. I'll sit here and antagonize people. People love that kind of entertainment. People, the Bible says you can even teach them the word of God and they still will reject it. They still will not accept the word of God. So in the days that we're living in, you want entertainment, you can go and listen to Marcus Rogers. I'm not in no way downing this man at all. His conduct is unbecoming of a Christian. I see videos. I see a lot of videos where he's calling out pastors and other Christians. But yet I don't understand where he's getting all this ideas from. Where is this coming from? Has he gone and seen a bunch of different pastors? Has he gone and talked to a plethora of Christians? He says if you don't talk about the word of God or you don't preach about sin that you're a gummy bear. So I challenged Marcus Rogers earlier in a short, do you talk about everything in your church? Do you preach about the importance of paying tithes? Because you're always getting on your channel and you're asking people to partner with you to get money from them to take care of your church. But that should be your congregation's responsibility as far as them paying their tithes. You said in a video, you don't, let, you don't speak on that. Do you speak about the attire that people should wear, men and women. You don't speak about that because you don't want to lose subscribers and you don't want to lose people out of your con congregation. Yet you have no problem challenging other people on their YouTube channels and getting mad and causing a bunch of chaos and controversy with them. This is a problem I have with a person's conduct. I'm not a person that will sit there and go and start controversy because I don't like controversy. What I do is I talk about the Word of God. What I do is go by what He says in His Word. And if this is what's going to cause the controversy, then this is what's going to cause the controversy. 
It's not up to me to go and sit here and start calling people names, putting people down, elevating myself higher than everybody else. See, I have studied psychology. I have studied body language. And so what I like to do is I like to sit back and I like to watch when I'm watching a person's video, not only am I listening to what they're saying, but I'm watching their disposition. I'm watching how they, they move. I'm watching whether they're shifting, whether they're moving their eyes when they talk about certain things. I look at the scripture and say, does this line up with scripture? Is their conduct, what they're doing right now, does this line up with scripture? Because their tongue is just going off in whatever direction that they want and they are putting other people down. Well, no, it isn't. Should this person repent? I believe they should. So when we're talking about things and we're on here, we have a huge responsibility, especially when we're advocating for our God. When we're advocating for our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a huge responsibility in how we, one, present our message, deliver that message, and what we say. I love you guys. I love the Bible. And it may seem like, man, you know, I'm fixated on certain things. I do get fixated on certain things. But the reason I do is because I care about what's going on. If people want entertainment, go be entertained. Listen to the entertainers on YouTube. Listen to the entertainers that will talk about God and use it as a business. Marcus Rogers is right in that aspect. I'll give him that. He is running a business himself. He is running a business. Okay? He gets on there. He says he, he he's you know, got all this fruit. He's caring, he's kind, he's got the Holy Spirit living in him, yet he's quick to sit there and downplay other people. He sit there and he's quick to accuse other people. And we see it when we've had these conversations on different platforms where he's accused other people of things and then they refute what he says and yet he still doesn't apologize for it. Now, he doesn't have to do this publicly he could do this privately, and I don't know if he ever has, but there are other people who said that they want to have these conversations with Marcus Rogers, and Marcus Rogers says, I want all the smoke. Give it to me. I'll take all the smoke. I will take that. And then you see that he's not even going on and delivering what he said. This is how you know the tongue is unruly. If you're going to say things, people might hold you to what you say. If you're going to be a Christian, be a Christian. I have my faults, so I can talk about other people's faults. I'm not a high and mighty person. I am below the dirt. I am learning to be a better Christian. And that has to come from my heart and my mind. I have to want to change. I have to believe I can change. And then the characteristics will show themselves. If I'm truly being a Christian, if I'm truly trying to live for God,